I'm Chris and I'm probably uh, borderline ADHD music. I love every style, so I jump around a lot. So to describe my style really depends on the day of the week you're asking. The guitar just allowed me access to every genre. So first it was Metallica and then through that I got into Steve Ray Vaughan, which got me into all the blues players. And then I got into some finger style players like Michael Hedges was a, was a real influence on me. I had this vision in my head of the music I wanted to create and it was uh, way out of reach. I really struggled trying to figure out how to pull off those sounds and watched a lot of YouTube videos and was like, how, how is that person even doing that? None of it makes any sense. And then slowly but surely it, it, it became like a vision. I know once I get into the creative mode, I want to have a lot of time to explore it. And that might be 10 minutes and that might be uh, two days. That might be a week. It's, it's being in the right place, uh, having the space to let things happen and not worrying about the clock. You know, I generally found that between uh, 11 uh, p.m. and 5 a.m. was like the sweet spot where, you know, the creativity would flow. And, and I lived in a, a high rise and I would look out and everyone would be sleeping. Like there wouldn't be even one light on in the whole city. And I just thought that was remarkable that all this energy was coming in and, and yet no one's awake. I'm like, is this a thing? Like, is this, when people are awake, are they stealing all the creative energy? And, or is it too noisy or what is it? I think like turning off life, all your realities, and being able to just be creative for no other reason is, is one of the best gifts for sure.
At Horizon, we have this sort of family dynamic with our teachers. We, we check in all the time, all the way through the pandemic, we've been doing online uh, hangouts. The school allowed us to keep doing what we love and it was a real essential um, service to a lot of people that wanted to learn music. Here we are now on the other side of it going, okay, we can look back. It's gonna be interesting to see what we bring from what we just learned and merge it with the past, how that used to work. I think that it'll be a good hybrid. I think people will continue to tune into online performances, more that couldn't make it to shows. So maybe if you're booking a show in Vancouver, uh, someone's gonna be able to watch it from Japan. So what advice would I give someone who's a musician, who's looking to take it to the next level, maybe wants to make an income, wants to play with other musicians, like they're ready to make that leap. Just really learn that community well, like meet everybody you can and, and don't just take, like give back, really like show up, like almost like an intern. It really importantly there is having a good coach, a good mentor, not necessarily signing up for the rest of your life, but having someone who can show you quickly what, what you're trying to learn and really tailor it to your needs and your personality. And then in terms of playing with other players, that's like a relationship. So, you know, you've got to gel, you've got to be able, like they say on the tour bus, you got to be able to hang. So, in other words, you could have the best player in the world who's a real jerk and no one wants to play with him or her. You got someone who's not quite as good, but they, they, they show up, they're a good person to be around. So be a good person and just, um, you know, gel well and, and support each other when family stuff comes up. You've got to want to do it. You've got to be thinking about it all day while you're doing your job. You can't wait to pick up your instrument and practice because you love it so much. Or even if you don't know what you're doing and you're having fun, you'll keep getting farther.